The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. Did you know that every day, in every interaction, there's a hidden battlefield? It's the unseen struggle of manipulation versus authenticity, where our minds and hearts are the prizes to be won. It's not just in the movies or dramatic novels, it's in our offices, our homes, and even in the palm of our hands through our phones. Now, imagine navigating this battlefield armed with wisdom from the ancient Stoics, thinkers who understood the value of the mind and how to protect it. They taught us not just to survive, but to thrive amidst life's chaos by holding firm to our inner citadel, our core of rationality and virtue. In today's world, where manipulation can come from anywhere and wear many masks, how do we apply stoic wisdom to recognize these tactics and shield ourselves? Stay with me and let's explore this together. We'll uncover the modern manipulations that test our stoicism and learn how to use ancient philosophies to guard our minds and live with purpose. This isn't just about avoiding pitfalls, it's about building a life of authenticity, resilience and true freedom. So, if you've ever felt played, pushed or just plain puzzled by the actions of others, you're in the right place. Let's dive into this journey of empowerment together, guided by the timeless wisdom of the Stoics and transform the way we interact with the world around us. And before we embark on this journey together, I'd like to ask a small favor. Hit that subscribe button. It's a simple click for you, but it's a huge support for us. Also, I urge you not to skip this journey. Skip any part of this video. You're here because you're not like the rest. You're an exception, seeking not just to navigate, but to understand and master the complexities of human interaction. Stick with me and let's unlock these insights together. Number one, triangulation. Imagine you and your friend are tight, right? Then there's this third person who comes along and suddenly your friend starts sharing things you said in confidence, or worse, twisting your words to create a narrative that pits you against each other. It's like being back in a schoolyard drama, but with higher stakes because, as adults, the emotional fallout can be way more severe. You start to question your judgments, your friendships, even your sense of reality. It's as if you're playing a game of chess with your friends. You're playing a game of chess with your friends. You're playing a game where the rules constantly change, and you're always a step behind. The real kicker? Often you don't even realize what's happening until you're knee-deep in doubts and feeling totally alone in the middle of a crowd. Stoics like Marcus Aurelius and Seneca taught us the value of inner peace and the importance of understanding our reactions to external events. When faced with triangulation, a Stoic approach would be to observe the situation with detachment recognize the manipulation for what it is, and refuse to let it disrupt your inner serenity. It's about realizing that, while you can't control the actions of others, you can control your response. The Stoic wisdom also teaches us about the importance of direct communication and seeking clarity in our interactions. If you suspect triangulation, approach the people involved with and openness. Often bringing hidden things into the light can dissolve the shadows of manipulation. So remember, in the face of triangulation, your best allies are your sense of self, your ability to question the narrative being spun around you, and your commitment to maintaining direct and transparent relationships. It's not about avoiding the leak in your boat, but knowing how to patch it up quickly and keep sailing forward, guided by the stars of wisdom and integrity. 2. Double Bind In real life, it manifests in situations where you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Each option laid out before you seems to lead to some form of critique or disappointment, effectively trapping you in a cycle of perpetual wrong choices. Here's a classic example. Imagine being encouraged to share your thoughts and speak your mind, to bring your true self to the table. So, you muster up the courage you open up, and bam, you're criticized or dismissed for doing just that. 
It's confusing, right? It's as if you're being told to jump into the pool, but the moment you do, you're scolded for getting wet. This tactic is a favorite for manipulators because it keeps you off balance. Your decisions, even your perceptions. The ground beneath you feels shaky because the rules seem to change based on the whims of someone else. Stoicism also teaches us about the dichotomy of control, a concept that's incredibly useful here. It's about understanding what is within our control and what isn't. Your actions, your responses, your integrity, these are under your control. People's actions, including their attempts to trap you in a double bind, are not. So, when you're encouraged to speak up only to be criticized, remember that your worth and the value of your contributions are not determined by the reactions of others. They are determined by your own commitment to speaking and acting with integrity. The stoic approach would be to recognize the Daubler Bind for what it is. An external challenge, not a reflection. It encourages use to respond not with frustration or self-doubt, but with a calm and detached assessment of the situation. Can you clarify the expectations? Can you discuss the contradictory feedback? If the situation remains untenable, Perhaps the stoic practice of turning inward and focusing on maintaining your own ethical standards is the best path forward. 3. Projection This can be particularly insidious because it not only confuses you, but can also make you doubt your own actions and feelings. For instance, if someone is feeling guilty about their own dishonesty, they might accuse you of being the liar. Or, if they struggle with jealousy, they might insist that you're the one who can't be trusted. It's a defense mechanism, a way of avoiding the discomfort of facing their own shortcomings. 4. Stoicism Stoicism encourages us to question the validity of the accusations being projected onto us. Are they a true reflection of our character or actions? Or are they a mirror reflecting someone else's issues? By maintaining a clear sense of self and staying grounded in our own truth, we can deflect these unfounded projections without allowing them to penetrate our own peace of mind. Marcus Aurelius reminds us to meet others' faults with compassion and understanding. Recognizing projection for what it is, a sign of someone else's inner turmoil allows us to respond not with anger or defensiveness, but with patience and empathy. This doesn't mean we accept the projection as true or let it slide without address. Instead, we can gently but firmly refute the false actions, accusations, and if possible, encourage the projector to reflect on their own behavior. The stoic approach to dealing with projection also involves recognizing the limits of our responsibility. We are responsible for our actions, our integrity, and our responses. We are not responsible for carrying the emotional baggage that others try to unload onto us. This distinction is crucial for maintaining our emotions. In dealing with projection, it's also helpful to maintain strong personal boundaries. Stoicism teaches us the value of knowing what belongs to us and what does not, emotionally, psychologically, and ethically. When someone projects their faults onto us, it's a clear signal to reinforce those boundaries, to protect our garden from someone else's trash, so to speak. 4. Time Pressure This manipulation tactic can pop up anywhere in sales. It's the limited time offer that pressures you to buy something right now in relationships. It might be a partner pushing for a quicker commitment than you're comfortable with, and in the workplace, it could manifest as unreasonable deadlines that force you to make decisions without adequate information or consideration. One of the core principles of Stoicism is the dichotomy of control, distinguishing between what is within our power and what is not, when faced with time pressure, it's crucial to remember that while we may not control the external demands placed on us, we do control our reactions to these demands. We can choose to take a breath, 
Step back and assess the situation with the clarity and rationality that Stoicism advocates, Seneca emphasizes, the value of time as our most precious resource, yet Stoicism also teaches us that the quality of our decisions, how aligned they are with our values and rational understanding is far more important than the speed with which we make them. Therefore, when someone tries to rush us, invoking the wisdom of Seneca can be a powerful antidote. It's about recognizing that the urgency is often artificial and that real opportunities, real friends and genuine deals will allow us the space and time to make decisions that are right for us. Marcus Aurelius encourages us to focus on the present moment and act with purpose and integrity. This stoic practice can be incredibly helpful when dealing with time pressure by staying present and not getting out of the present moment and not getting out of the present moment and not getting swept up in the frenzy of a ticking clock. We can maintain our composure and make decisions that reflect our true selves and our genuine best interests. The stoic approach to time pressure also involves practicing courage, the courage to say no, the courage to ask for more time and the courage to stand by our decisions. Even if they go against the grain of urgency imposed by others, it's about having the strength to resist the wave of immediacy and choose the path that aligns with our reasoned judgment and personal values. 5. Inconsistency This tactic is particularly jarring because it plays with our basic human need for stability and predictability in relationships. When someone's behavior towards us is inconsistent, it triggers a deep sense of unease. We are wired to seek approval and a sense of belonging, so when these are given and then abruptly withdrawn, it leaves us craving more, trying to figure out the puzzle and inevitably walking on eggshells. The Stoics teach us that our happiness and peace of mind should not depend on external factors, including the behavior of others. Seneca advises us to anchor our happiness in our own virtue and reason, rather than in the appropriate circumstances. Epictetus reminds us that we have the power to choose our responses to external events. When faced with inconsistency, we can choose to stay centered, reminding ourselves that the only thing we truly control is our own thoughts and actions. This doesn't mean we become indifferent or uncaring about how others treat us. Instead, it means we don't let our emotional well-being be at the mercy of someone else's fluctuating moods. Stoicism is a practice of self-worth. Practicing Stoicism in the face of inconsistency means cultivating a sense of self-worth that is independent of external validation. It involves recognizing that while we may desire consistency and clarity in our relationships, we don't need them to be content or to feel good about ourselves. Marcus Aurelius encourages us to find tranquility within ourselves, regardless of external chaos. Stoicism is a practice of self-worth. This internal tranquility becomes our compass, guiding us through the fog of inconsistency without losing our way. Moreover, Stoicism teaches us the value of clear communication and setting boundaries. Inconsistency in others might sometimes be a call for us to express our needs and expectations more clearly. It invites us to practice the Stoic virtues of courage and justice. Courage to address the problems of others and justice to do so with kindness and respect for both ourselves and the other person. 6. Emotional blackmail. Imagine someone has taken your emotions, those raw and real feelings that make you who you are, and locked them up. To get them back, to feel okay again, you're told you must pay a price. Maybe it's doing something you're uncomfortable with, or maybe it's sacrificing your own needs, your values. It's as though your feelings are being held hostage and the ransom is your compliance, your agreement to do whatever it is that the blackmailer wants. This isn't just manipulation. It's manipulation that cuts deep, 
using the very essence of your human experience, your capacity to feel against you. Emotional blackmail can manifest in many ways, guilt trips, fear-mongering, obligation and shaming. It's a tactic that plays on our fears, our loves, our desires to be seen as good, caring individuals. But here's the thing, real love, real respect, they don't come with strings attached. They're not conditional on meeting a set of demands or sacrificing your well-being for someone else's desires. Stoicism reminds us that while we cannot control the actions or demands of others, we can control our reactions to them. We can choose not to play the game. Marcus Aurelius teaches us about the importance of living in accordance with nature, which includes being true to our own nature, our own character. When someone attempts to use emotional blackmail against us, they're asking us to act against our nature, to betray our own values and integrity for the sake of their desires. One more thing. The stoic response is to hold firm to our personal values, our principles to act with virtue and to maintain our inner peace and dignity, regardless of external pressures. Stoicism also teaches us about the importance of compassion, both for ourselves and for others. In the face of emotional blackmail, it's crucial to extend compassion to ourselves, to recognize that it's okay to feel upset or conflicted, but also to remember that we don't have to act on those feelings. It's equally important to try and understand where the other person is coming from, as their actions are likely driven by their own pain or unmet needs. However, understanding does not mean acquiescing. We can offer empathy without sacrificing our autonomy. 7. Gaslighting This isn't just a disagreement. It's an attempt to make you question your perception of reality itself. That's gaslighting. It's a form of manipulation so subtle and insidious that it can shake the very foundations of your confidence, making you doubt your memory, your sanity, even your truth. Gaslighting can come in many forms. Denying something you know happened, contradicting your feelings, or dismissing your concerns as irrational or overly sensitive. The goal is always the same, to understand the truth. Number eight trust. This is the only way to trust. The only way to trust is to undermine your trust in your own experiences and perceptions, making you more dependent on the manipulator's version of reality. Marcus Aurelius reminds us to be steadfast in the face of external turmoil. He teaches us to trust in our own perceptions and to return to our internal citadel, our place of rationality and inner peace, where no one else's words can reach us. Stoicism also encourages us to engage in constant trust. This is the only way to trust. The only way to trust is to trust in our own perceptions, not our own thoughts. The only way to trust is to trust in our own perceptions, not our own thoughts. Self-reflection to examine our beliefs and perceptions, not with doubt, but with clarity and honesty. This practice can be incredibly empowering in the context of gaslighting. It allows us to differentiate between legitimate self-examination and the external imposition of doubt. By knowing ourselves and our minds deeply, we can recognize when our reality is being unfairly challenged. The stoic approach to gaslighting is to trust in our own perceptions, not our own thoughts. It is not about becoming impervious to manipulation, but about recognizing it for what it is, an external attempt to control and destabilize, and responding with the strength of our internal fortitude, our commitment to our truth, and our trust in our own perceptions. It's about maintaining our mental and emotional equilibrium, even when someone tries to tell who's the sky isn't blue. 8. False socialization. This tactic leverages our deep-seated human need to belong, to be part of the tribe. It whispers in our ear that to fit in, we must follow the crowd, even when our gut tells us otherwise. But here's the twist. Just because someone says 
everyone is doing it doesn't make it true. This is a classic case of false social approval, a manipulation technique designed to sway our actions or opinions, resulting from using our emotional worth as counsel, tool by exploiting our desire for social conformity. Marcus Aurelius advised us to act in accordance with nature, our own nature, and to be true to ourselves. When faced with false social approval, his teachings remind us that our actions should align with our inner virtues, not with the fleeting trends of social consensus. He prompts us to ask ourselves, is this action virtuous? Does it contribute to the common good? Is it inhomogeneous? Or can it champion an ideal lesser nature? Could it play a role in being egged to harmony with my true self? Stoicism also teaches us about the power of ataraxia, peace of mind achieved by living in accordance with reason. This concept becomes particularly relevant in the face of false social approval. By staying true to our reasoned judgments and not being swayed by the supposed actions of the masses, we preserve our inner peace. This doesn't mean isolating ourselves from society or rejecting social norms outright. Rather, it means critically assessing the value and impact of these norms on our lives and making conscious choices about which to follow. Furthermore, the stoic practice of premeditation, visualizing potential challenges and preparing oneself to face them can be invaluable here. By anticipating situations where false social approval might be leveraged, we can be able to understand the reality of the world. By doing so, we can fortify our minds, rehearsing our adherence to stoic principles and our commitment to acting with integrity, regardless of external pressures. 9. Concealment of Information Picture yourself excited and ready to tackle a puzzle, but as you start to piece it together, you realize that half the pieces are missing. No matter how hard you try, you'll end up failing. You can't complete the picture, can't see the whole image. This frustration is akin to the experience of having crucial information concealed from you. It's a deliberate act to skew your perception, to keep you from seeing the full truth, thus influencing your decisions and opinions based on incomplete data. The concealment of information can happen in various contexts. In personal relationships, where someone might withhold feelings or intentions, in professional settings, where full details of a project or decision might be kept under wraps, or even in larger societal or political discussions where the full facts are not disclosed to the public. This tactic plays on our natural desire to understand and make sense of our world, and when pieces of the puzzle are deliberately kept from us, it can lead to confusion, misunderstandings, and misguided actions. Number 10. Confusion and Misguided Action Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, advised against hasty judgments and decisions made without full understanding. He would counsel us to be patient, to question, and to seek out as much information as possible before forming an opinion or making a decision. This doesn't mean we become paralyzed by indecision, but rather that we acknowledge the incomplete nature of our understanding and proceed with a measured and reasoned approach. Moreover, Marcus Aurelius reminds us of the value of inner wisdom and the pursuit of truth for its own sake. When faced with the concealment of information, we are invited to tap into our own inner resources, to use our reason and judgment to question the gaps in our knowledge and to seek out additional sources of information. This pursuit of the full picture is not just about making better decisions, it's about aligning ourselves more closely with the future. It is about making the right decisions. It's the stoic ideal of living in accordance with nature and truth. 10. Fear Attachment It's about using scare tactics to control your actions by attaching a frightening outcome to any choice other than compliance. It's a powerful form of manipulation because it taps into one of our most primal instincts. 
Fear-fear attachment can manifest in various aspects of life relationships, where one might say, if you leave, you'll never find someone like me again, to professional environments where the implication might be, do this or your career here is over. It creates a scenario where fear, rather than rational judgment, becomes the driving force behind your decisions. The Stoics teach us that fear, like any other emotion, is not an accurate reflection of reality, but rather a perception that can be examined, understood, and ultimately controlled. Marcus Aurelius reminds us of the power of our rational mind to maintain equanimity in the face of external disturbances, including attempts to manipulate us through fear. He advocates for a return to our inner citadel, our place of reason and virtue, where we can find the clarity and strength to stand firm in our decisions, unaffected by the external noise and unfounded threats. Moreover, Seneca suggests that often, when we confront our fears head-on, we find that they are not as insurmountable as they seemed. By facing the supposed consequences of non-compliance, we often find that the power they held over us diminishes, freeing us to make decisions based on our true values and best interests, rather than out of fear. 11. The Blame Game This tactic is a classic move in the manipulator's playbook, shifting responsibility away from themselves and onto you, making you the fall guy for their actions or mistakes. The blame game can be particularly damaging because it not only places undue stress and guilt on you, but can also tarnish your reputation and relationships with others. It's a tactic that relies on the fact that when you're in doubt, you're making it challenging to see the situation clearly and defend yourself effectively. When accused unfairly, it's crucial to remember that while we may not control the accusations themselves, we do control how we respond to them. The Stoic approach encourages us to respond with reason and calm, to examine the facts of the situation and to stand firm in our truth. 12. The Prologue the Stoic approach encourages us to meet false accusations with tranquility and to maintain our character in the face of adversity. He would counsel us not to retaliate with anger or defensiveness, but to calmly present our case and let our actions speak to our character. This Stoic composure allows us to maintain our dignity and peace of mind, even when faced with unjust blame. Seneca offers wisdom on dealing with adversity and false accusations, suggesting that our character and virtues will ultimately vindicate us. He advocates for patience and understanding, recognizing that sometimes the truth takes time to emerge. In the meantime, we should live in such a way that those who know us will not believe the false accusations, and those who do not will be won over by our steadfast virtue. 13. Victimization This is a complex tactic because it plays on one of our most noble instincts, the desire to help those in need. It puts you in a bind where saying no can feel like abandoning someone in their hour of need, even when your gut tells you that their distress might not be as straightforward as it seems. Stoicism teaches us the importance of wisdom, the ability to see things for what they truly are, it encourages us to look beyond the surface, to question the narrative being presented, and to discern whether our help is genuinely needed or if we're being manipulated under the guise of victimhood. Marcus Aurelius urges us to act with kindness and justice, but also with wisdom. He would counsel us to extend our empathy judiciously, ensuring that our desire to help is not being exploited for manipulative ends. Stoicism doesn't call for a hardening of the heart, but for a sharpening of the mind, to see when our virtues are being turned against us. Seneca, with his insight into the complexities of human relationships, reminds us that true help does not always mean giving others what they want, but what they truly need. Sometimes the most compassionate response can be to encourage self-sufficiency and resilience 
rather than acquiescing to demands that serve only to entrench the manipulator's victim narrative. The stoic practice of reflection is also invaluable here. By reflecting on our interactions, we can better understand when our empathy is being exploited. This reflection allows us to set healthy boundaries offering support in ways that are truly helpful without becoming enmeshed in manipulative dynamics.